It's really nice to see if in this modern day and age, in the 21st century, they're rebuilding canals. I find that, I find that really nice. Today's walk, because uh, we <laughs> obviously can't get a narrowboat at the moment. So today's walk is going to be a return to the Cotswold canals. In fact, the Stroud water navigation. This is where it all begins. This behind me, this big, fast flowing, wide expanse of water is the River Severn. And so we're going to find a path which will take us from the River Severn onto the old canal. And I know some of it is in water and some of it is dry, so, and we might get lost and we might get muddy. It's going to be a bit of a sort of take it as you find it sort of day. So if you'd care to join us, I have no dogs because I'm expecting a lot of mud. So I gave the dogs the day off. So Mike and I have got our muddy boots on. So if you'd like to join us for a stroll, it would be very nice to have your company. Isn't this just the sort of way you want to start a walk? A beautiful little hooped archway through a beach hedge, I guess it would be. Ooh. Walk this way. Quick! If I'm going to avoid the mud, I might have to do some silly walks today. So, just walked past the enormous big river and we saw some nice big old houses. And I thought to myself, it's a bit scary that would be because big river, small wall between you and the river and a big house. And then I saw the church. And so I thought, well, if you live in the house, you'd be worried about being flooded. But if someone's built a church here, that probably means it doesn't flood here. So, yeah, it all makes sense now, doesn't it? Big river, small wall. Obviously what they do is the flood water goes on the other bank. <laughs> I suspect that's what happens. The river is about 50 metres that way. Just walked past a house called Lock House and we found this, which I'm guessing is the old beginning of the canal, the beginning of the uh, Stroud Water Navigation, I'm guessing. So I don't know what happens between the river and here, if they're ever going to open that up again, don't know. But I know in theory, in theory, I believe, it's going to go from that river, the River Severn, all the way to the River Thames, which is a long, long way. Today you won't do that far, just a couple of miles today. But there you go, look, the remains of an old canal with uh, the remains of an old lock, I guess, or bridge. Oh, exciting times. <laughs> I don't know how old this is, but it's like a tiny baby whomping willow from Harry Potter, isn't it? Plumb in the middle of the canal. We've just had a few hundred feet of canal, which is kind of strange because it's obviously derelict, but at the same time there's still water in it. So it's a weird thing between cuteness, present day derelection, and also thinking there's going to be so much work to get it back to being a canal. But now you literally turn a corner and it's gone. This, this is where the canal should be, but there's nothing except trees. Wow. It does make you realise if you're going to get that link from the Severn to the Thames, it's an awful lot of work, awful lot. Uh, I don't know if you're confused at the moment, but I'll, I'll backtrack and tell you what's happened so far. We started off at the River Severn, we walked along it, then we found the old canal, so we walked along that, then it disappeared, 
So we walked along by the River Froome, which is a small river which joins the Severn. And now we've just come up through a large, beautiful expanse of water. This is the Gloucester and Sharp Ness Canal. And behind me, you've got Junction Bridge House, which is where the old Stroud Water navigation leaves this canal and goes that way towards Stroud. So that's where we're going. I love it when a plan comes together. It gets better. We have just found an old lock. So obviously this is where the old Stroud Water Navigation arrived at this big Gloucester and Sharp Ness Canal. And literally, <clears throat> it's like a crossroads of water. It came up in the lock, crossed over the other canal, and then kept on going again. Ah, it's beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Ready? One, two, ah! The Gloucester and Sharpness Canal is that thing behind me. You may notice it's a big, wide expanse of water. And I just read here, when it was opened, it was the widest and deepest canal in the country. Because what it was, is if you go that way a bit, you hit the River Severn. So basically you can get seafaring ships come down here and go all the way up to Gloucester, where they can unload and, <coughs> and then reload. Again, a sign. I do love a good sign. Thank you. To everyone who puts the signs up by the side of canals, thank you. I have found one last exciting detail on the sign behind me. There's an old lock on the Stroudwater navigation which joins here and the gates are in the water and they look a bit weird and they look weird because they've got paddles on the gates which kind of swing open. I've never seen that design before but I can just see. See there they are now. If you come in, look. <coughs> Basically, that piece of wood which goes down into the water, it covers a hole in the gate. And when you move that piece of wood, it opens the hole and lets all the water in and out. And you move that piece of wood by turning this thing here. And it pulls this piece of metal in and moves the paddle. I've never seen one like that before. Very exciting. Who can resist dancing across a bridge that is so gorgeous and slightly bouncy? I can't resist. I know it's a strange thing to get excited about, but we've walked along that derelict bit and then it disappeared. And now suddenly it's like, ah, we're back on a normal canal with lots of boats, narrow boats, lots of water. I don't know how long it'll last, but at the moment this feels rather, uh, I said, I never knew it was here, so it feels rather exciting, like we've found a little tiny jewel hidden away. So that didn't last long, did it? It's about, probably about 500 metres, and you come to this bridge, which is an immovable object, so you can't get boats past it. But luckily, there's a TARDIS at hand, so we can go to another dimension. If you'll excuse me, I'm off. No, I'm not. Mike and I were just talking about this. It's weird. Walking along it, it really does feel like you're visiting a canal graveyard. I mean, look, we've got a lock. Half the gates are missing. The other half don't look entirely secure. But you know, it's all gonna come back to life. So in some ways, it'll be a zombie canal. It was dead once, but soon it will be living. I think it would be a lot prettier than any zombie. So there you go. I, I just hope I live long enough to see it happen. Very nice. Behind me, there is a gorgeous tree and a really rather cute bridge. And I'm very glad to see them both because we haven't filmed for about the last 10, 15 minutes because we got lost. We've been wandering over fields and then going back and wandering over other fields. And it's taken us a while to find our way back to what we think might be the right direction. So there you go, I'm very pleased to see the bridge. Because that does look like a canal bridge, doesn't it? 
Do you reckon it's a canal bridge? Yeah. Excellent, we found the canal again. I don't know how we, how do you lose a canal? But hey, we did. You want me to get attacked by Tom's, you say? Okay. Anything for the film, Mike. Don't worry, Swans. Not going to get too close. Okay. Behind me, there is a pillbox. And to the right, there is the derelict canal, which tells me that that pillbox was made in the Second World War in the 1940s. So in the 1940s, this canal was still alive and kicking. And the authorities, the powers that be, were concerned that the Germans would come up the, up the sea and along the canals inland and invade. So they built the pillboxes. So fascinating. So 100 feet that way, we have a pillbox from the Second World War. And 100 feet that way, we have the A38. And a brand new, shiny, lovely thing. And that is someone, <laughs> I don't know who it is, but they've built basically the canal to go under the A38. So of course, it's a hideous carbuncle, a monstrosity, the A38. So they would have totally killed the canal. So someone spent the money and the time and the effort and they have rebuilt a tiny stretch of canal which goes under the A38. And now all they've got to do is rebuild all this bit that we've walked this morning. Hmm. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the new bit. I'm not sure if we can walk through it or what we've got to do, but let's go and explore. That is something I've never seen before. Brand new, pretty much empty canal. Just stops. But it's really nice to see if in this modern day and age, in the 21st century, they're rebuilding canals. I find, that, I find that really nice. I would get more excited, but today is one of those sort of sombre, bleak, grey days where it feels a bit odd to be overexcited. Instead, I'm all pleasantly thoughtful. Hmm. Pleasant thoughts, that's what I'm thinking. Hmm. About the possibility of one day before I die coming through here on a narrowboat. That'd be really nice. I would really enjoy that. And this is the A38, the thing the canal goes under. And that, that was a lorry with my name on it. <laughs> where I lived, there's a company called Cullimore. And I always get excited where I'm on the motorway. You see the lorries going up and down, thundering up and down, these huge, great lorries saying Cullimore. Childish, really, isn't it? Ah. So I'm standing on the squelchy banks of the River Frome. A38 is just there, you can hear it in the background. In the distance, there are more cars and lorries. That's the M5, another big, fat old road. And again, the canal doesn't go under that road at the moment, so you have to. In fact, I think they've just got the money to build a bridge over that, or under that, I don't know, but they've, either way, the day will come when the canal will go all this way. But for the moment, I'll be honest, the time is ticking on, it's gone past lunchtime, there's nowhere to get lunch, and it's all a bit grim and bleak, so rather than getting downhearted, we're gonna turn round and make our way back to the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal and see if we can find a cup of tea or coffee there. Ah, <sighs> it's been really nice. As always, just to be out and about is better than being stuck at home doing nothing. So it's been a lovely day. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, feel free to um, give me a thumbs up or a comment or something. Okay, bye.